Welcome back, Mindsetters. This is a great edition now of your grade 11, and we're talking about life sciences today. Hope you're all up and ready because we'll be having some more fun. But before we have that fun, let me tell you about some important addresses that you need to jot down. The first one, it's for you to participate over Facebook by asking your questions and keeping your comments coming. Our address is facebook.com forward slash learn extra or on twitter we are at learn extra you can also download today's show notes on our website which is learn extra dot co dot za forward slash live and today's show is proudly sponsored by macmillan hence i'm having my life sciences textbook you can also get yours so today we're all about life sciences for grade 11 and i'm not alone i'm with lou Lou, how are you doing? All right in yourself. Is everything all right out there? I'm awesome. I'm just a bit scared. I just saw so many things coming in. So I don't know, should I be scared? No, you never have to worry about this. I oh. always try and bring out some things to improve the lesson. All right. <laughs> Can you tell our mindsetters what's on for the show today? Sure. We're having a look at how invertebrates actually, um, what's the importance of them? You know, because everything on earth, as, as I said before, is, is very important and we need everything. So what I've done is... I've, I've got a couple of things out here. Right, so I'm going to explain them. And I remember, I do this all the time. I, I actually show you the stuff, right? And once I've seen them all and you've seen them all, then I go and explain it. So I've, I've come to the easiest part because they will not allow me to present at the ocean and under the sea. Now, the next thing we're going to have a look at is called sponges, right? And sponges you find under the ocean. And <coughs> that is what they look like. If you can have a look, they're nice and yellow. There's that one. There's that one, and there's that one. Now, all three of those are your sponges. Now, I'm going to explain what they look like. They are the most primitive or, or, the, or the, the smallest form that you get, right, with animal tissue. Oh, well, not animal tissue, your little animals, right? This is the smallest we get. Then we go on to the next one, which is this funny little thing. Now, I got this from a pet shop. Right? The pet shops have these that make the tanks look all nice, so you must just understand where they come from. This here, I know it looks like a little toy that people play with, but this is actually a sea anemone. Now, a sea anemone is the next thing. It's a cynodaria. Right? That's the next part up. Remember, the easiest part, and then we go to the more difficult parts. Right? And if we put them all together, then it looks something like that. Right? Now... If I had a look at this, I've got my sea anemone here on the top, I've got my blue sponges here on the side, and then I've got coral and everything around, right? All those together form our little coral reefs and all of that. Very, very important. These are the nice things, right? Then I try to get hold of a flatworm. Now, no matter how good I am and no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get them, okay? Because they're actually a parasite. Okay, we find them inside uh, the ocean, and we do find them in humans. I'll explain them later on. But no matter how I tried, every possible way, nobody would give me one. Can you believe it? Right? I want to show you guys as much as possible, and they wouldn't give me one. It's ridiculous. Right? So I couldn't get the flat, flatworm. And the flatworm, its real name is plat platylmenthes, right? which we'll talk about later. Then we go into the roundworms. Now, roundworms are easy to get. right? So what I've done is I first went and got... Like this funny thing, it's, it's like this. It's a worm. Now, I don't know how, how you can, I don't know if it's white, but I don't know how much you can get hold of it. This here is a, oh, I've got an idea. There we go. This is an earthworm. Now, it's hanging because I've had it all day. And can you imagine this thing being out of the soil all day? That is your flat worm. Oh, I mean, your, your round worm. But I thought I'd just give you a taste of what's actually a round worm supposed to look like. I went digging. Now, have a look at that. You can just see all this stuff. Now, if I just irritate them a bit, look how they start coming out. Okay? These things are worms. Okay? I'm going to hang him upside down. I'm going to try as much as I can. There he is. You can see him wiggling all over the place, right? And if I put him like that in my hand, you can see there he goes. He's actually going backwards, right? That is a mealworm. Right? We normally give these things to our bearded dragons and all of those type of things, and some, sometimes to the birds. Right? They love these things. These are normal little mealworms, and there's quite a few of them. I mean, if I had to dig, I'll see quite a few coming out. And if you can see it and tilt, and they love the wood. They stay in there and they eat that. Right? There's an albino one. Oh, look at this. It's actually shedding. Look how nice that actually is. 
So it's shedding. It's coming out of its old skin. There's its old skin. Now, the nice thing I've just seen about that, I don't want to hurt that one. I'm going to let him go. Okay? But he's busy shedding his skin. Now, you've just seen how he sheds his skin. Now, that's very important because I've got something to show you later. I've hidden it just so that you can't see it. Right. So that is your roundworm, right? Now, after roundworm, we go through to arthropods. Now, arthropods are things like your insects, right? So if we have a look at it, we've got things like this, if I turn it around. We have a look over here. We've got our spiders. We've got our millipedes. We've got all the different little insects. Now, if you have a look on this one, okay, I've got this thing over here, and a lot of people don't have a clue what that actually is. Now, that is very special to get one of those. That is called a horseshoe crab. Okay, it's a crab. It's awesome. It's, I've never seen one in real life, but that is quite cool. I thought that you guys might enjoy that. I'm going to move this sponge. There's another nice pink sponge that I brought across the right, uh, uh, out of the way. Now, that there is unbelievable. You won't get those here. Well, you will get them here, but you won't see them very often. Okay, so I've got a hold of those. Next, I've got this thing. I'm going to do it like that. I hope you can see it. That is a little beetle, okay? As an insect, a little beetle. Now, this beetle is quite cool. This beetle you can find in the Kruger National Park, okay? This is called a dung beetle. Now, this dung beetle actually pushes something four, five, six times its own body weight, okay? It's big. And all it does is it pushes dung around. You all know what dung is. That is the feces of the animals. So the, <coughs> let's see, the wildebeest goes to the toilet, drops it, these guys come and pick it up. And what does it actually do with it? It actually lays its eggs in it, right? So if I move this away, and I want you to have a look. This is exactly what it is. This is from a dung beetle, okay? Have a nice look. It's from a dung beetle. Now, it rolls this around, but it also makes sure that it's hollow, so that its baby goes, right? And if you give it a good Lick, which I won't, don't worry. <laughs> this thing is hard. It's very hard. It's like a rock. You won't believe it. You know, I could, if I took this and clouted it against Abram's head, right, um, which will break first? Of course. Of Edward. course, because his brain's inside yours yes. and nothing hurts the brains. Right. So this is as hard as rock. It's very hard. And I would lick it, but um, <laughs> I don't want to leave a funny taste in my mouth. How's that? Right, so, now what I have done, I've, I've got something special for you, so hopefully you can come in nice and close. See, I hit it for a reason. I brought this. This is called an arachnid. Do you all know what an arachnid is, right? Abram, do you know what an, arach uh, an arachnid is? What? I have no idea. Ah, a spider. It's, it's a, a spider. spider. Have a look at that. Now, you must understand that, remember I said, said to you earlier that that worm was shedding, right? This has just shed. This spider, this is the shedding of the spider. There's nothing in here. This is just the, the, the outer case. Remember, spider has got this outer skeleton that actually protects it, okay? So it cannot grow with it. So the spider, when it gets too big, it comes out of its shell, right, or out of its protective armor, and it moves along, and it leaves this, this behind. Now, I didn't think that you would get a nice, I don't know if you can get in there. It's a very difficult, right? So I thought it would be only fair to make sure that you can get in that I went and got a decent size one, right? Now, you can see how, I just don't want to break him because it's very soft, okay? I move the top. Remember, the thing that I'm moving now is the head of it. And you can see inside each little chamber, if I move it like that, each, I uh, move this down, each little chamber is where the legs would come out. It would pop out of that chamber. It's very interesting. And the nice thing is, if I hold it like this, oh, there goes one leg already. I told you, they break very easily. Have a look. Over here, I'm going to use his leg. So you've got to watch nice and carefully, if I can just get a hang of it. Over here, where his leg's pointing now, is his teeth. So have a good look at the size of those teeth. Can you imagine being bitten by that thing? Okay. Now, I'm going to try to hold it steady, but I can only hold it as steady as I can. Have a good look. Can you see the teeth? Okay. The teeth are... Uh -huh, let's see. Um, I don't know if you're going to see it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I don't like doing, but I'm going to actually make sure that I can get it to you. Ah, Come on. Come on. There. 
there's a tooth. How nice is that? Let's see if I can turn this around. Have a look. That is what the tooth actually looks like. Can you see it, Danya? Look at the size of that teeth. Hey, how cool is that? Now imagine, this is a pet. This is a pet. This is the things that we actually put in a home and we actually hold and it climbs all over you. That is a pet and that's the size of its teeth. Okay? And it eats insects, which means it eats flesh, which means one bite. Uh, I don't want to feel that. So hopefully you enjoyed that, right? I, I thought this would be very nice. Now, this is the front piece. This would be the mandibles and, and everything is nice and thick. But you can see the whole thing's hollow, right? It just simply breaks, nice and simply. It just breaks. It's a simple thing. Okay, and you would notice all the hairs, and those hairs are there for certain reasons. Right, everything on the spider is for a specific reason. All right, Lou, having said that, still on spiders, I have a question from Lucinda, sure. which is saying, why can't spiders be classified as insects? Sorry, say that again? Why can't spiders be classified as insects? Oh, because it's got eight legs. <laughs> right, because it, it is actually as an insect. But um, what, what I thought is, let's, let's, uh, uh, I'd like to get you together. Let's see how brave oh, you are today. Yes. Come on. <laughs> you don't want to do Put that. your hands out. You can okay. do this. Look at that. Have a good feel. Feel the, the, the how do you call it? The, 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 the legs. Feel how the fluffiness. The fluffiness. That's mm. not going to hurt you. So you don't. Mm. Okay. I can see you. I'll, I'll no, you it's, it's okay. Next time I I'll can bring be strong. snakes. I can be strong. You can be strong. Next time I'll bring some snakes. Now snakes are also good, but <laughs> snakes are in the other field. Right now we're just talking about this. Right, so hopefully, now that you've seen the things in like semi-real life, real life, these are the actual things. They are the actual animals. They've actually been put into um, perspex, and you can actually see that they're nice and clear. The spider, the, the millipede, the um, crayfish, and all of that. They're all there, nice and easy. In actual fact, if you could get nice and close, between the horseshoe crab and the spider is actually a tick. Right, so it's not a tick. Uh, uh, yeah, it is a tick. It's a tick. Nice and close, in, you can see, and they're quite cool. And this is also lovely. Altogether, if I have a look at the at a millipede, remember that one that I saw on the inside there? This one over here, this one here, in between the other spider. This is him here. Now, this guy, whenever he gets scared, he rolls himself up into a ball. Now, don't be scared, but there we go. Let's get away. There he goes. Look at him. Hey, how cool is that? Look at him walking away there. Okay, have a look. He's got thousands of legs. They're the coolest things in the world. Okay, that is a special uh, type of segmented worm or arthropod. Right. Okay, so I'm going to put him away so that I don't actually hurt him because I like making sure animals can go home. Hopefully you've learned something nice there. Let's go learn on the board. <coughs> well, now that I'm back, we can start doing some work. Now, biodiversity of animals and the importance. Now, to be able to get anywhere, this, this lesson, we are going to have a look at specific things, right? We're going to revise. You know what revise is? Revise is where we just go over and make sure everything's working nicely, right? So we're going to revise over the specific thing. The porphyria, oh, I've got an eraser on. It's never going to work me and you, right? We're going to have a look. If we go to the board, the porphyria, we're going to go to the cynodera, we're going to go to platelmenthes, the annelids, and the arthropods. Now, I had a specimen for every single one of those. Now, remember, I've just put a couple of on the table, but there are millions and thousands of different types, right? They are the biggest thing. You think we pop populate this earth? We've got nothing compared to those guys, right? So then we're going to have a look at the importance of what they do on the environment. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Last time I spoke to you, we actually had a look at the body plans of each and every one of these things, right? We had a look at things like if they bilaterally sim sim symmetrical, if they are radial symmetry, if they're asymmetrical. We had a look at things like your coeloms, your, um, what else was there, uh, through guts. Can you remember the blood system, open blood system, closed blood system, whether they have one or not, right? We had a look at all of those, right? So hopefully I've put a nice background or nice information before we get into this, right? So what I think is, I think you need to go for a stretch. I'm going to go for a nice big stretch because a mass and stuff so amazing about all these things, right? I'm going to quickly go for a break. You go for a break, a good stretch, and I'll see you straight afterwards. Abram.
as we have said it, it's time to get some, scre- some stretch on. But mindset is be on the page. Make sure that as you stretch, you also keep your questions coming and your comments. We'll see you right after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you're enjoying the show, of which you really, really are enjoying it. I'm having some fascinating and very great comments of the show. Uh, you know what, Lou, they say, we're loving the teacher. He's the best. Oh, that's so nice. That and you know what, what makes them to say <laughs> that? It's the fact that you brought some, you know, some little mini... Um, that's specimens. Exactly. That's the only and way they're teach. enjoying that. How are you ever going to learn if you don't see it in as real as possible? Well, so I would. True. If I could bring the real stuff, I would. But um, I try and bring as real as possible. <laughs> nice one. Having said that, mindset is you can still get your notes. It's, for, it's simple and they're for free. Over our website, it is learnextra.co.za forward slash live. And also over Facebook, we are there. As we are hearing some, some more stuff, get on the Facebook page. We are on facebook.com forward slash learnextra. We're here, Lou's here, and Lou, take it away. Perfect. Now, let's start with the, with the, the grinding stuff. Now, remember that I'm not going to go into like detail because we don't have much time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go roundabout so that you can understand where we're coming from. Right, so let's have a look at it. The first thing we're going to have a look at, and today I feel cool, so I'm going to try green, right? So let's have a look at the board. The porphyria or sponges. Now, it's not the sponges that we wash dishes with because I, I try to bring those, but they just do not look right. Right, so they are, if I have a look at it, asymmetrical, right? asymmetrical, which means they have different, uh, you, you can't separate them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and reach over, there we go. If you have a look at this, no matter how I cut this, it's not going to look the same on even, right? If I want it symmet- sy- symmetrical, whatever's on this side must be equal to whatever's on this side, right? So if I had to divide an animal in half, it's got to be equal all the time, right? That's what symmetrical means. Asymmetrical means no matter how I cut this, even if I cut it like this, like this, or like this, or like this, there's going to be three in the back, two in the front, one in the back, one in, uh, six in the front. You know, you cannot cut it. That's asymmetric, your normal asymmetrical, right? So that one is never going to work. So it's asymmet- uh, asymmetrical, right? It has two layers, right? Simple. The epidermis and the, endo- uh, the, the inner of the outer layer, the ectodermis and the endodermis, which is the different layers, right? The inner layer and the outer layer. Just simple. That's why it's so simple. It's only got two layers, right? It's an acelomate. What is a coelom? Can you remember? Okay, it's a part in the gut. There's this gap in the gut straight after the digestive system. It goes around the digestive system. Okay, that is your coelom. Please don't forget, it's very important. That's what, how we classify all these animals. It's all got to do with these following steps. Whether it's symmetrical, whether it's an acelomate, okay. Se- yeah, this, this, this big word. Please don't forget this big word. This is a huge word if we have a look at it. Cephalization. Okay, it's like this big, right? The problem is, is it, if I had to look at that, I would have think like, um, what's that word where people like Russian develop a country, their civilization, there we go. I would have thought it was something like that, but it's actually not. That is saying, cephalization is saying whether you've got a brain, okay? Now, you do get animals with brains, trust me. Your dog, you throw a ball, it goes and fetches and brings it back. Right? That's how it works. It's got a brain. A worm, it doesn't like this part of the soil. It's got a brain to move to this part of the soil. But a sponge, once it's there, it's there. It's just going to go in a wind, enjoy its life. You get what I'm trying to say? So you must look at it like like that. Okay? It has no blood system. Now, what does a blood system actually do? A blood system takes nutrients from the air, Right? Where I've taken it in my mouth or into my stomach, to everywhere, into my lungs, and to my, to my hands, to my feet, toes, you name it, all over the place. It doesn't need it. It's like this big. And inside it, if I had to, to draw it roundabout, okay? So you've got to understand where I'm coming from, okay? If I had to, to draw it, okay? It looks something like this. There, it goes in, out, there. Okay, and over here would be little holes. And then what actually happens is the food comes in there, right? And there's little stinging things that come out here and grabs the food and it takes in all the nutrients to the cells and then gets kicked out. But all of this is right here. It can pass through that 
that, that big word. It's not, it's not actually a big word, but I'm talking about a word that's called, try to think of it. You know, diffusion. You all know what diffusion is. Abraham, do you know what diffusion is? No, no it's idea. moving from like a high concentration to a low, where there's lots of the stuff to where there's like nothing of the stuff. So you want to even it out. So you know, more like when the, lights, the light diffuses, moving from there darker to a more lighter. Yeah, something like that. We, we, we're looking at where you've got a lot of food, right? Just think about it. You've got a king with a lot of food, and he's going to say, ah, oh, all the guys in there don't have food, so let's share it all out. That's what diffusion is. It's moving from this spot to their homes, okay? That is what diffusion is. So it's just going to take the nutrients and diffuse it into the different t uh, layers or cells that it needs, right? So it doesn't need big, okay? It doesn't need a lot, right? So let's carry on. And now we're going to go to the importance of periphery. Now, just think about it. Where did I want to go? Right? I beg and plead to go there, but it's never going to happen. I've got to just put it down and wrap it on my stomach and rub it off like my mom used to say to me. Right? Diving. You go under the ocean and you go have a look at these beautiful... I mean, you've all heard about like Mauritius and, and what's that big one? that Bahamas, hey? Bahamas, yes. Where those seas are so clear and oh, perfect, right? You go swimming under there and you just see coral. Hey, am I right? Mm, my brother, no. How nice would that be? The corals <laughs> there. Now, what is that for? There's a specific reason, okay? Now... These things are very gentle. They don't like waves. That's why they're always in that like, ocean where it's calm, right? These guys give houses or they give place for fish to sleep or to stay, right? That's the first thing. The second of all, it actually cleans the water. It takes in bacteria and it filters minerals and all of that. So it's a nice little thing. It cleans out the ocean quite nicely, right? And the one thing that we also use it for is, I don't know if you call it a loofah, you know what a loofah is? They wash backs with it and, and they go crazy. They give it one of those with a big stick on and wash backs and they scrub. That is a loofah, right? They make it out of sponges, the, sea, the, 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 the sponges from the sea, right? So they use that. And another thing that we try and use it for, it's a big thing, okay? It's one of the newest things we're trying out. So if you look at the board over here, we've got, here it is, thought that they can cure many diseases such as cancer. Okay, so we are researching using them to cure cancer. We're trying. I don't know if it's happening yet. I'm sure some guys found it somewhere, but we're trying to use it because there's lots, lots of it. Right. Okay, so that is the first one. Next one we're going to go have a look at. Now remember, I want to rush through all of these different little seg segments. The next one is Sinadera. There it is, Sinadera. Now, that is the step up. We're going from the least complicated to the most complicated. Now, let's have a look at this. Remember I said to you those body plans. First one, it is acylomate. Right? Right. Is it an acylomate? Okay. A uh, what's it? Acylomate means? Has it got a silo inside? No. It's very simple. This is still all very simple. We're looking at how simple the things are and how difficult they are. So, let's check. Radial symmetrical. Okay. Now we're starting to think. Now, if you watched one of my shows, we had a look at a thing called, and, and it's not... It's not part of this. Get this right. I'm not going to use this thing under this name, but I want to show you a picture. Okay, so you've you got to take it where I'm coming from. So it's not this. If I have a look at a thing that looks like this. Okay, also swims in. The, that's a horrible picture. That's terrible. Wait, 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 wait. I can do better than that, I'm sure. Right, let's have a decent look. Okay. It's one up there, one over there, one over there, one over there, one over there, and up. There we go. A starfish. Check. I can do it, right? Starfish. Now, starfish is radial symmetry. It's got radial symmetry, right? So it doesn't belong to this group, but it's a nice way to show it. Because if I take this thing and I divide it, let's use pink, right? And I divide it, and I divide it exactly down here. Look at that. It's half, half, one, 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 one. Can you see how they are even on both sides, right? Let's do it another way, okay? Let's do it this way. There it is. Exactly the same thing, right? Next one. There it is. Oh, it should be down there. You see how every time we do this, okay, it's even on each side. So no matter how you cut it in a circle, it's going to be even, okay? So that's radial symmetry, okay? So this thing that we're talking about is radial symmetry, okay? The next one, it's diploblastic. In other words, it's got an 
ectoderm, which is outside. It's got an endoderm. Let's draw it here. It's got an ectoderm, right? It's got an endoderm. And in between here, right, it's got this fluidy substance, okay? And where is it? It's your mesoglia. I just need to find where that name is. Yeah, mesoderm with a jelly-like mesoglia between it, okay? It's got a jelly-like substance in the, in the middle. So because I said a jelly-like substance, I want you to remember that what type of animal is this, okay? You've got to look at the specific parts. These are quite nice, right? Jelly, and we normally find them in the sea, okay? Abram, can you give us a clue? Jelly and normally found in the sea. Give me a clue. Jellyfish. Ah, jellyfish, woo! And uh, brains are going crazy <laughs> here today, right? So we've got a jellyfish. The jellyfish belongs to these. Now jellyfish, if you go onto the beach and it's, and it's like lying there, you can cut it any way you want. It looks even on all sides, right? Radial symmetry. Now, let's have a look at the importance of these things. Right, where we go. Importance of these things, okay? Cynodera are being researched for the exact same thing. Biochemicals. Oh, bio me, uh, um, me, I'm now I'm telling you, sometimes I just got to train my mouth to say words, right? It's biomedical, okay? They're using it to find medicine. And for the exact same thing, have you noticed how we're trying to get cancer gone, okay? Because cancer is cells that are dividing. We're trying to stop them from dividing so many times, right? So we use it for that, okay? Coral, can you remember when I was showing you the demonstration, I took out the sponges, then I took out the sea anemones, and then I brought them together. And I showed you, there was blue sponges, there was your sea anemone, and then there was coral, right? Now coral also is one of these, okay? Your coral is also providing a habitat, as soon as I get uh, my pen, it's also providing a habitat for other fish and other, other animals. It also stops the sharks and that from coming in. Okay, so how nice is that? It's protecting the fish. It's a protecting thing for the little fish. That's why you get all the colorful fish there, right? And the coral makes us a lot of money as well. I mean, just think about it. There, I've just had coral, but I would like real coral. The, more the, the, the better the coral looks, the more I want to do it. Right, okay. Now, there's the coral. How cool is that? Hey? Now, let's go on to the next one. Body plan. Platyomenthes, flat worms. Okay, let's have a look at it. Body plans, bisymmetry, uh, bi which means you can cut in half. That's simple. Bi, right down here. It's bi, it's biometric, um, bilaterally symmet symmetrical, right? We're going down. It's triploblastic, which means it's got an ectoderm, an endoderm, and a mesoderm on the inside. Three different layers. Does this thing have a coelom? No, it doesn't need, need one. It's still very, very simple. Right, and if we carry on, it's free living. We normally see it in the ocean. Okay, we also have different. We, we also use them as parasites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down here because I actually want to show you what this actually thing is. It mainly feeds on uh, bacteria. If I have a look at the board, bacteria and invertebrates like protozoa. Right, all of those things. Okay, come together to feed this animal. Now. We've got humans also have these things in them. And the worst thing is like the liver fluke, right? Which attacks the liver, it destroys our livers. And then we get this thing called, where, yeah, where's the liver fluke? Here it is. There's the liver fluke. And we've got the tapeworm. Have a look again. Tapeworm and bilharzia. All of these things are horrible, right? Those things we're trying to, those are the ones that hurt us. So let's have a look. at How pretty is this worm? Hey? That is a flat worm that we found in the ocean. Hey, how nice is that? Now, I know I'm rushing through these things, but you can find all these things on the, on the net. Am I right? Yes, Abram? you're right. It's all there, all for you. Please don't. Please go and use it. It's what it's there for, right? And of course, me, I like the ugly stuff. So what I've done is I've put on that. How cool is that? Have a look at those little pincers on the side. If you have a look, like if you look from a distance, I'm trying to see how you're seeing it, right? Those pincers, right, they hook onto your small intestine and they hang on there for dear life and they suck all the stuff out of you, right? How nice is that? That's your tapeworm. And they get long, and I mean like, like long. Long as in, you know your intestines go like this all over the place, right? They do the same. They follow it, right? How bad is that? So before I go on to questions, because I think that's the next thing. I, I always like giving questions at the end, right? 
think another stretch because I need one. Abram, what do you think? I also need one on That's that note. It. Having said that, mindset is as we take our own stretch, make sure that you download our notes there for free on our website, which is learnextra.co.za forward slash live. And they're proudly sponsored by Macmillan. For now, let's take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. We all revitalized and so energetic. As you can see, Lou is so energetic, and we just can't wait to get on the questions now. Hope you're ready too. But if you're missing out, download your notes. They're for free on learnextra.co.za forward slash live. But also on Facebook, we are there to, to, to catch up with you guys with any questions and any comments. Remember, we are on facebook.com forward slash learnextra. And Lou is up and ready for the questions now. Nice. So, what I've done is, I really like this thing that I'm going to ask you now, right? So, I made sure that I put it in, because this thing is called a dichotomous key. Now, a dichotomous key is so cool, but you've got to know your stuff, okay? So, this is how it works. I'm going to explain how it works, and then I'm going to show you how to do it, right? So, let me go. Let's get some, um, some green going here again, because I feel like green, right? We go. We'll have one, okay? And on that one, it'll say... Is this, let's, let's use, let's use um, my little, my little thing is here. Okay, my little thing is that I used to have. Okay, so has it, uh, it'll go, has it got eight legs? If it has, then go to question two. And then question two will be here. But this will be A and B. Then we'll say, if it has eight legs, go to question two. If it does not have eight legs, right, it will be a worm. Okay, so that's how we do it. That means worms are out of the way. Now we go to question two. Now question two would say, um, is, it, is it a big one? And we'll go to question three. Uh, that's A and B. Is it a small one? And it would be uh, daddy long legs. Do, do, do you get what I'm trying to say? It's just moving one off the other. Now, that seems quite easy, I think. Hey, Abram, what did mm. you think? You, th you think I'd, I'd explain it as much as possible? I think so. Now, we need to do this. We need to do this using big words. Now, I want you to remember the words, right? It's porphyria, okay? It's synodera. It is platyl menthes, right? It is analytes, and it's arthropods. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to kick in this chordata, which means backbones. That's me. I've got a backbone. Well, depends how big the person is that's attacking me, if I'll <laughs> have a backbone or not, I reckon. Okay, so... You're with me. So let's try this out. I had to explain it first so we can get there. Let's go up. All the way up. Okay, the question is, now, I got these questions from Solution for All Life Science, which is the Macmillan book. Right, so let's have a look at it. Copy this key, and we need to see which phylum each of them work in. So here we go. Now, pull this all up. Okay, number one. Here it is. I'm going to take it there. This is one. I'm just going to underline the question, and I'm going to do it with you. Without symmetry, okay, without symmetry and or proper tissue. Now, I want you to think about it. What is the thing that we said does not have symmetry? Remember, bisymmetry or radial symmetry, okay? Well, it's bilaterally symmetry, right? Radial symmetry, and we got asymmetry. Can you remember what asymmetry is? Okay, that one was your Porphyria. So what I'm going to do is over here, A, it's going to write there, hopefully it'll work. It's your porphyria. Uh, I'm just going to do that so that we've got it. That's A. Because it says without symmetry, the phylum is A, and A is porphyria. Okay, let's go to the second. Without symmetry, uh, with symmetry and proper tissue, go to B. There's question B. Okay, so let's have think about that. The first one I've already got. Now, do I need to worry about porphyria again? It's out of the question. We don't need it. It's out there. We know what it is. It is without symmetry and does not have true tissues. Let's look at the next one. Okay, if we go to B. Okay, radial symmetrical, which automatically puts that jelly thing in. Can you remember the name of it? 
Jellyfish? Jellyfish, there we go. So we put a jellyfish on. It is diploblastic. Remember, it's got an ectoderm, it's got an endoderm, and it's got that mesoglia in the middle so that it's got that jelly-like feeling. Right, okay. So what is that thing called? It's synodaria. So look here. If it, the phylum is B, if it's uh, radial symmetry. Right, so B would be, I'm just going to put C in, synodaria. Okay. Very easy, very simple. Now, let's look at the next. Bilaterally symmetri symmetrical, okay? Uh, let's see, and it is triploblastic, okay? That automatically separates diploblastic and tri triploblastic. All we're busy doing is every time we come to a crossroads, we say, okay, are we going to go left or are we going to go right? Everybody that goes left has a certain trait. Everybody that goes right has a certain trait, okay? So if you are radial symmetry, you belong to synodaria. If you are bilaterally symmetrical, which I could get that word out today, and a triploblastic, it means you go the other one. And where's the other one? We're going to question C. Let's have a look at question C. Without a body cavity and dorsal ventrally flattened. Now, dorsal ventrally flattened. How am I going to remember that? Dorsal ventrally flattened. The only thing that I remember mentioning to you guys about flat is a flatworm. Can you remember that? And in that flatworm, I mentioned that we have them. We've got that, the tapeworm inside us and the liver fluke and all of those, right? They were inside us. They were flat. And remember, it had that, that beautiful color in the marines, right? It, it was like that blue and green and stunning worm. That's a flatworm. That's the only flat thing I remember saying. So it has to be a flatworm. And a flatworm is Plateal menthes. So plat, I'm going to put plat down here. Okay, that has to be plat, plateal menthes, the side. And if I have a look at without uh, and without a body cavity. Okay, this has a body cavity. Without a body cavity, oh, everything with, with body cavity moves to the one side. Everything goes, the other ones go to the other side. Right, so se separating again. This one, if I bring that down, I want to keep it all together. A, B, C, there's B, it's C, it's plat. Oh, there we go. Let me just move this up slightly so we can get it. It's plat. Okay, we all got it. Plat, plateal menthes, right? And we move on to the next one. With body cavities, go to D. Ah, there's D. Now, coelom formed from a split in the mesoglea. Now, what does, I know that I've taught this before, but maybe I should show you again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way down just so that you can see what's going on. There we go. Now, if you can remember the coelo on the inside, if I had something round, we've got this ectoderm. There it is, right? Okay. Then we've got a gut on the inside. You can all see that. Yes. Okay. Then we get this. I'm just going to change some color here. We're going to get this part over here. Okay. And we are going to fill all this up. Can you see how the different layers, as you can see, those layers that are pink now are supposed to be full. This green layer on the inside, that's the gut. That's where the food travels down, right? And this see-through layer or the black layer all by itself, that is a cavity. It's a huge hole, okay? Now, these cavities are there for specific reasons. A cavity actually holds specialized um, organs. So if we look at ourselves and we look at our cavities, we've got our... Um, See, I can't use stomach because stomach's in our, uh, uh, our digestive system. So I'll use things like your pancreas, your kidneys, your, all those things are inside this bag around your digestive system. Right, so that's the first one. You either have that, right? And this is actually called the coelo, but it's a false coelo. Now, you, I'm sure you've heard these names before. Right? This is pseudocelomate. Pseudo meaning false, and coelomate is it's got a, a cavity. So it's got a false cavity. It's pretending it's got a cavity, but it doesn't. Right. So the other one, if you have a look at it, will have the round piece on the outside. Okay. It'll have its gut in the middle, right? And then it would actually do that. Okay, and it'll form a complete gut. Um, how am I going to erase that so you can actually see what I've done? Okay, I want to do that. And back to the pen. It's got 
a complete gut going around. It doesn't go all the way through. It just separates. It's got a gut all by itself. It doesn't go all the way around. I could actually, I could actually join these two up, and you will notice how it actually doesn't go right round this piece. See, this one went right round. This one doesn't. Now, this part is the important part. That's the silo, that part that I just drew in. That is the silo. That is the part that we're actually looking for. Okay, that is a true silo. That is a, a, a pseudo silo mate, which means it's false and it's a true silo. True silo on the left. Well, how are you looking? On the right and the other one's on the left. The false silo on the left. Right, so let's go back up to where we came from. D, okay. Silo formed from a split in the mesoderm, okay? If that's the case, then we go to E, okay? Cool. So we've got to go to E if it was a split, and coelom form from a pouch in the gut. Now, let's have a look at those two. There's a split between the mesoderm and the gut, okay? Here is a little pouch, okay? So that is a coelom. This is a, it's actually a P, okay? Okay, so it's a, su a pseudo coelomate. If I go up, let's look. Coelom that is formed from a split in the mesoderm. That's the first one, okay? And let's have a look at it. We're going to move. E. Let's look at E. Where's E? Here we go. No jointed legs. Segmented worm with a circular cross section. Now, what is that? Remember, I held it up like this in the beginning, the demonstration. It was like hanging, and I said to you guys, well, this thing was in my all day with me, and it's very hot. Can you remember? That is the earthworm. Okay, that is an annelid. Okay, so let's see. Annelid is, let's see, phylum D. Phylum D is annelid, so let's go D here. D, I know it's a different color. It's an annelid. That looks like an R. Annelid, okay, and the last one, it says they go to F, F with a notical. What is a notical? Abram, you've got to come here, my Mm. Come, 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 come. Don't, don't just sit there. All right. Come, bud. Now, he has a note cord. Now, this thing here, if I turn him around, this thing running down the middle of it, and if I push hard enough, he like shrieks and goes mad. It goes from the bottom over here, and it goes all the way up into his head here. This is called a note cord, right? It's a spinal cord. <laughs> it's a spinal cord. Now, that spinal cord carries your nerves on the inside, right? That nerve is called a note, note cord. Now, the animals that have a note cord, those are your core data, okay? It has, there we go, a notochord and splits into thorax and pharynx. Oh, I mean, your, uh, your throat and your pharynx, which is up in the top here. Right, you all get that. Now, that would be your core data. So if I'm going to go back there, what label is that? F. F, 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 F. F, and it's your core data. Now, let's have a look at this. Let's see if we can do it in order. I want to just put lines here so you can see where I'm going, and I know... There's some parts. There we go. Let's have a look. This is exactly the order in which the animals are how difficult or how complex or how amazing they are. Right. So let's have a look at it. The first one is your periphera. It's a simple, easy, simple animal. It's the simplest we get. Then we have a look at your cynodaria. That is your, uh, your jellyfish. It's swimming around. That's your sea anemone. It's all of those. Those are the next complicated or because they've got symmetry, okay? There we have a look at the next one, your plat platyl menthes, which is your first worm. It's a flat worm. It can cause diseases in humans. It can also, um, it, it's, uh, what is it? It's found in the ocean as well, right? So it swims around there. It sometimes eats coral. It helps, um, it helps with bacteria, kills bacteria and that, okay? Next one is your annelid, okay? That is your earthworm, okay? After the earthworm, we're going to get your Actual fact, we've missed out one. We're going to get your arachnids. Your arachnids have got jointed legs, and I didn't see it in there. I think I've missed it out. But jointed legs, remember, then we've got that big spider that I brought in, right? The jointed legs, it's got uh, um, a shell around it. Now, the way I remember arthropods, I don't know if you've all remembered. I'm sure you've heard about stories. If I'm not, not, not mistaken, Abram, uh, Arthur and the Round Table, the knights, Hey, you've all heard mm -hmm. about the knights, mm -hmm. right? You all want to find, and you've got those silver things on it, and as they're walking, they've got that steel stuff, and they draw their swords. Yes. That's Arthur and their knights, right? Arthur has knights. Now, knights were in the silver, like, suit, power suit, right? So that if you hit them, it was metal on metal. Now, these guys, the arth arthropods, 
have got the same thing. It's got that covering on the outside. It's got chitin on the outside, which makes him hard. That's why that spider had to come out and leave its shell behind, right? That is that. It's its armor. It got too big for its armor, so it went to go fa find another armor. That armor is called chitin, and that's how I remember that arthropods are all your insects, right? So all the insects that, that we have. Okay, cool. And then we've got the chordata, which we haven't spoke about. It's your vertebrates. We're talking about invertebrates. And those are the ones with that spinal cord right down the middle, which I, I, I showed you now in Abram. Right, so hopefully you've got this. This is a lovely question. People love answering, asking it, but they don't know how to explain it. So hopefully you go over it and try and remember and try and get it. Right, so let's have a look at it. I know that the next thing I put on is a couple of multiple choice questions because it's not multiple guess not multiple guess. One of the biggest things that I was taught about multiple choice questions, well, about a test, is that you get section A, section B, and section C. Now section A, if the test is out of 150, for instance, it's 50, 50, 50, 150, right? So a third of the paper has got your multiple choice and your small questions, okay? And these small questions are all about the simplest thing out, okay? Definitions, if you know your definitions, you know what to do, okay? So make sure you go and learn the definitions. I mean, if I ask what a plat platyl menthes is, you must say a platyl menthes is a flat worm, okay? It's not difficult. Just learn the, th it's not theories. It's just learn what each word means, okay? Because you get, give the definition for, give one word for, match the columns, uh, right? All of those things are just on a specific thing, and that is knowing what a word means. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. Okay, the specialized cells found, well, let me write you up. The specialized, there we go, specialized cell, as soon as I can get a pen, okay, a specialized cell found in the body walls of a sponge that filters tiny particles of food. Okay, now remember I said I'm not going to detail with everything, but those things are very simple. Let's, let's do the first thing. Let's cancel out what doesn't work. Okay, I always do this. Mesoglia, we always start with the one. Mesoglia. Can it be a mesoglia? Remember, mesoglia is that jelly-like substance in between the endoderm, oh, the, yeah, the ectoderm and the endoderm, right? It was a mesoglia, mesoderm type of thing. Can you remember that? Does that have stinging cells in it? No, it's pointless. Here we go. Let's get rid of this. That doesn't happen. Okay. The endoderm cells. What is an endoderm cell going to do? That I have endoderm cells. You have endoderm cells. Endoderm means the cells right on the inside. Right? That's endoderm. So, no, can't be endoderm cells. Okay? So we're going to put that one down and cross it out. Then, we've got two more cells. Okay? These are the big words. Now we get collar cells. Okay? And we get nematocytes. Now, nematocytes are, I'm going to tell you now, because you're going to have to learn this. Okay? Nematocytes, you know when you get, I don't know why, but this is coming up all the time. Right? You get this thing called a what? I know it's a terrible joint, but it's called a jellyfish, right? And th you've got these, these tentacles coming down off it, right? And they've got stinging cells on it. Those things, those ones are your nematocytes, okay? Which leaves collar cells. And collar cells are actually found, remember I said to you in that part where it goes like that, right? There's a cell over here. This, that little cell, it does this. And it does this, and out comes a little stinging cell, and it stings and grabs all its food. Right, so it is a collet cell. That's the right answer. Very simple, very easy. Make sure you get it. Let's look at the next, next one quickly. The arthropod that has been linked to the spread of cholera. Okay, can it be a mosquito? No, because they fly around and they bite me at night in my veins and they suck the blood. Cholera's got nothing to do with blood. Right, so can't be a mosquito. Spider catches insects. What is he going to do on me and insects? He's gone, his history. Right, okay. Ticks, leave them up to the dog biting them, right? You get tick bite fever. You do not get human fever, right? And I know, I know we can get tick bite fever, but get where I'm coming from. We can get tick bite fever, but we don't get this cholera from ticks, right? So that's out of the question. Now, flies. Where do we get flies? Flies are those simple ones that land on feces and diseases and and then they come and they sit on your food and you must remember a fly is is like bleh. 
because what it does is it lands on and it throws up and it throws up all its stomach juices and it digests the food and then it sucks it back up. Right, so if it's got cholera in it, it's going to push it out there and it's going to suck it up. Right, so hopefully I've helped you and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, have a good night. And Abram, that's all I have Thank you very much. Unfortunately, this was just the last live broadcast for Grade 11. Next week, we'll be, we'll be mm -hmm. having some revisions. Hope Mind Cities will catch up with uh, tonight's show and also next week on the revisions. But thank yes. you very much, Lou. Ah, it's a pleasure anytime and thanks for having me. All right, thank you very much. Up next, it is a great show on Great 12s. We'll be talking about evolution. But for now, also thank you to our Macmillan sponsors for proudly giving us these notes. Thank you very much, guys. See you right after this. Stay blessed. Cheers.